Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, well, we are going to be taking a look at not one, but two brand new CMU emulator versions. The first of which is titled 1.15.11 and the second is the eagerly awaited 1.16.0 containing the Vulkan API. So to get some details out of the way in respect to public releases of these two versions, all that you need to know is that 1.15.11 is going to release for everyone for free next Friday the 2nd of August and we have absolutely no public release date for the 1.16.0 version containing Vulkan. So in this video I'm going to be going over all the changes in this 1.15.11 version, all the changes in 1.16.0 and I'm also going to be taking a look at how the Vulkan API works on CMU currently. This is going to include NVIDIA, AMD and Intel GPU testing, so stay tuned for that. First up though, let's take a look at everything that has changed in 1.15.11. First up, we're going to go over some general changes where they have added better update and DLC handling. This was done so that the MLC folder locations for updates and DLCs would better match those of the actual Wii U. This means that any newly installed updates or DLCs are going to be stored in this new location while anything you have already got installed is going to remain in its old area but still be fully functional. They have also improved the detection of different types of content. This will mostly affect game installations and your games list. And on top of this, when installing updates and DLCs, CMU will now back up previously installed content and restore it in the event of a failure or cancellation. Moving on to some gamepad changes, opening the input configuration window will no longer temporarily disconnect your emulated controllers and they have also fixed a PPC stack issue that could prevent games with two player modes being unplayable when two controllers were connected. On top of this, they have also introduced a whole host of GX2 or graphical changes, mostly in relation to shader tweaks to bridge the gap between the OpenGL backend and the upcoming Vulkan renderer. Since these changes are only really going to affect you if you are a graphics pack developer, so rather than spending 5 or 10 minutes explaining them, I will list them down in this video's description for you to check out. So moving on to 1.16.0, while we haven't really been given a change log, we have been given a list of things you can expect from this new version. First up, we have a list of currently known issues, including graphical bugs everywhere, instability where we've been told that depending on the game, it's not unlikely for CMU to crash every couple of minutes. We can also expect VRAM leaks regardless of your GPUs and we've also been told that some games don't boot at all, however we've also been told that this may be a graphics card or a vendor specific. The final currently known issue is the fact that resizing the window or full screen mode doesn't fully work or when it does work it can be very buggy. On top of these currently known issues, we've also been given a list of current limitations of this new Vulkan API backend. First up, we have the fact that graphics packs are only partially supported. Things like FPS++ and most game mods are going to be fine. However, most resolution graphics packs are not going to function at all. Any other graphics packs, especially ones that edit shaders, are also not likely to work on this Vulkan backend. We also have absolutely no shader cache, but as you're going to see in a few minutes, due to the speed of compiling shaders on this new Vulkan backend, this is almost a non-issue. The Vulkan renderer also forces linear upscale and downscale filters, native resolution screenshots are currently not implemented, and the gamepad view or separate gamepad window is only currently partially working. Okay, so now that all that's out of the way, I want to give you guys a quick demonstration of just how much faster the Vulkan API is in relation to the speed of shader compilation in-game. What you are currently watching is the older OpenGL backend that we've had since the beginning of CMU Emulator. The stutters you're seeing on screen are going to be familiar to almost all CMU users. This is exactly what would happen in the OpenGL backend every single time you experience a new interaction in game. For example, you're seeing me cutting grass now or just a general movement around the game world. Your game is going to freeze and lock up for a few seconds while you can see in the top left hand corner of our screen our shaders are compiling. An extreme example of this can be seen when you go to use any of the complex runes. For example, let's take out my Cryonis rune and use it for the very first time. 
you can see we get huge amounts of freezes and stutter this is all in real time remember this is exactly what you would experience the very first time you see an effect like this in any of your games another extreme example would be if you're using the bomb room for the first time so i'll take it out throw it into the water you can even see we get extreme stutter when i throw it into the water and when it explodes it locks my game up for a few seconds now let's do all of those actions again but this time on the vulcan back end let's move around the game world again you can see in the top left hand corner my shaders are building let's take out my sword and cut down this grass again absolutely no stutter like we were seeing on the OpenGL backend and in relation to performance you can see that it is already very respectable even though this Vulcan renderer has not been optimized at all. Again let's take another look at a very extreme example with the Creonis rune again. Let's take it out for the very first time, use it and again you can see in the top left hand corner my shaders are compiling the exact same as they did on OpenGL except we are getting almost zero stutter on the Vulcan backend. Another extreme example, let's take out my bomb rune, throw it in the river and then detonate it. You can see that it is literally a night and day difference between the OpenGL and Vulcan backend. I even did some speed timing tests to see exactly how much faster the Vulcan renderer was than OpenGL in relation to shader compilation and I found that it is between 6 and 15 times faster than OpenGL in relation to these kind of speeds. That is pretty damn impressive when you consider it's in a currently unoptimized state. Okay, so let's move along and take a look at AMD GPUs where I've done some testing using my RX 580. Again, let's start things off by taking a look at the OpenGL backend. You can see my performance not only in my graph on the right hand side of the screen, but also at the top of the CMU emulator window. This area is central Hyrule and it is an area that I personally use for a maximum frame rate testing on a CMU emulator in Breath of the Wild. You can see here that my maximum frame rate is around 57 to 58 frames per second and it is usually mostly in and around 40 to 45. As with the Nvidia GPU we previously tested, you can see how much stutter or slowdown we get when we perform even simple actions like cutting grass. Swapping over to the Vulcan renderer again, our performance absolutely skyrockets, bringing our maximum frame rate from 54 up to 92 frames per second and our average frame rate from 48 up to 74. Now, while obviously it isn't rendered perfectly in the Vulcan backend, especially so you can see in some of the foliage like the grass or the stamina wheel like you can see on screen now. However, as with the Nvidia GPU we previously tested, when we do any of these actions, even the complicated ones like that Urbosa's Fury attack, we are not getting anywhere near the shader stutter we were on OpenGL. Again, as I said in the Nvidia section of this video, Vulcan is currently in a very unoptimized state and things are only going to get better. This is going to be especially promising for all of you AMD GPU users out there considering the fact that already you are seeing massive performance improvements in this Vulcan backend. This just goes to show you how absolutely terrible the OpenGL support is on current AMD Windows drivers and hopefully with more optimizations this Vulcan backend is going to give you even more performance. Now everything isn't sunshine and roses in relation to the Vulcan renderer and Breath of the Wild. You're going to see here in a second that on AMD GPUs and Nvidia GPUs there are some fairly extreme texture corruptions and for AMD GPU users this can randomly happen where it kind of appears like a nuclear bomb is going off in your game and pretty much regardless of what you do there is no stopping this from happening on the current work in progress version. Now it's not amazing on the Nvidia or Intel side either for example on Nvidia GPUs you're going to be getting extreme VRAM leaks and Breath of the Wild pretty much crashes every 15 or 25 minutes for me. Now on top of this, Intel GPUs have their own host of issues, for example Breath of the Wild currently on work in progress 3 is not playable at all. This is because current iGPUs do not support transform feedbacks which are present in games like Breath of the Wild and Smash Bros. So unfortunately if you try to boot those titles on your iGPU they are just going to instantly crash. 
Now, for iGPU users, it's not all doom and gloom, as many titles are working very well. One, for example, is displayed right now, The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker HD. It does have some issues with shadows as you can see in the gameplay footage, although Nvidia and AMD GPUs also share this graphical issue. Now if there are any games you would like to see tested on these work in progress Vulcan builds, please let me know down below this video in a comment and again as always if I have access to that game I will test it out for you absolutely no problem at all. As these Vulcan builds progress and as we get more up to date versions I will also be doing updates on some of the most popular games like Wind Waker, Breath of the Wild, Xenoblade Chronicles and Bayonetta 2 so keep your eyes peeled on the channel for those updates. Before I go I want to give a massive thank you to all of my supporters over on Patreon.com. I know I don't say it enough but I really really do appreciate the support that you guys are giving me and my YouTube channel. If any of you guys want to help in the day to day running of BSOD gaming, helping to pay for things like games for testing, power bills, internet bills, water bills and everything else that is necessary for the running and maintenance of a channel like this, please consider heading to the Patreon link down below and pledging to support. I know I also say this all the time but pledging or donating is 100% not a requirement to get games tested, get any help here on YouTube or get any assistance over over on a discord but to all of my past present and future supporters thank you guys very very much so if you like this video guys remember to give it a thumbs up as it really does help with the visibility of not just this video but my youtube channel in its entirety and if you want to see future videos from me remember to hit that subscribe button down below thank you guys very much for checking out this video have a great day and i will see you in the next one